This is the Neisner 500 SE, a luxury South African catamaran at a modest price. Let's go and have a look and see what we think. So category one always sees us looking at the helm position. Let's go and see what Teresa had to say on the day about this. Okay, so this is the helming position of the Nice and the 500 and it is really nice. It's interesting because it's like essentially what looks like it used to be like a hatch or a, 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 light, a, a window in the um, kind of in the bimini top but now they've just kind of created this hollow space where the helm position is and um, I thought looking at the photos it would be a bit weird but actually it feels really really nice it is very spacious I felt like I might just be like poking my head out of the uh, out of the hatch but it feels like a really nice enclosed safe helming position um, so obviously as you know we are big on uh, a safe a comfortable and a practical helming position and I think fulfills all of those criteria I can see while sitting down I can see both bows so that is fantastic I can actually see um, the aft corner uh, on both uh, bows as well so I can sorry on both holes I can see both aft corners and both um, bows so I've got full 360 visibility right here while sitting down. I don't have to stand up and like crane my neck. I can see everything from a seated position. So when maneuvering and when docking, that would be super handy. So I really like that aspect of it. Obviously while underway, I'm just sitting here and I can see everything. There's no need for me to crane my neck, to look around anything, to stand up, to kind of duck down. I can see everything. In terms of um, all the lines, it looks as though all the lines run back to uh, the four winches right here. They look like there's at least two electric winches. That's obviously an option. Um, and obviously all the lines kind of come back and they go into bags and uh, they're all stowed away nicely. I really like this humming position. This is fantastic. There is a hard top bimini above me with some windows in that I can see the sails through and there's a, a, an enclosure, like a tent as well. Uh, with clear panels in it so you can be protected and um, still have good visibility. No complaints at all. Very comfortable seat as well. I like it. So in addition to this, nice to provide a really comfortable footrest for those of us that aren't all six foot tall. The instruments are clear and easy to see. This is going to be a really nice space to do your night watches or your day watches. Aircraft grade glass in the bimini roof also means that if you want to look at your sails while you are in the cockpit, that's going to be a breeze as well. Let's go and look on deck. So uh, really wide side decks, actually really nice wide side decks. Handrails this far, nothing further forward actually. So you, you lose your handrails, I'm sure you can put some on, but they, they're not on this boat. The hatches aren't flush mounted, I'd like that. Um, but it's a really wide deck. It's a really wide deck and there's nice little features on this boat. For instance, um, the outboard lift. So it, it come, there's a bar, uh, a beam that comes from the back of the boom for lowering the, uh, the outboard and the motor. So that's really nice as a feature. Moving forward. These windows are glass. So, you know, they haven't got a problem with crazing or uh, later life. And the, the fittings are, you know, they're, they're big, strong. I don't look at anything and think that's under spec. Mm -hmm. um, and some really clever features like the, the, the big opening hatches um, in the cockpit. So you've got a lot of features that you think, oh, okay, that's innovative. Um, I like it. I like it. And as I said, for the price that this is, you're getting a lot of boat for the money. So how do we score the Nice the 500 SE? We're going to give it a 9 out of 10. We are docking a point for the lack of complete rails around the boat and the hatches. Category 2 sees us looking at the engine bay. Now, access to the engine on the SE is by lifting the gas strut on the stern cabin beds, and you have secure and safe and dry engine access. That's fantastic. Access to the filtration systems is good, although it does seem to be quite tight around the engine. So I would question how easy it would be to do certain chores if you had to get to the back of that engine. However, everything looked to be well placed and well laid out. There is also some fairly significant sound and heat insulation there. So well done, Neisner. 
Moving on to the deck space, the standing rigging. This is all really super strong. There's a massive gooseneck there. And looking at areas that I love to look at, like the area going to the bowsprit from the trampolines, this is very, very well built. This is a lovely and sturdy boat. Similarly, the interior of the Neisner, it is semi-customizable, but the attention to detail and the quality of things like the upholstery stitching here is beyond fault. Looking down in the hulls and at the level of craftsmanship in the woodwork, this lattice work is not to my taste, but it does show a high degree of workmanship. Everything is well finished. There are solid edges to the cabinetry and to the tables. This boat will wear well. Everything from finish to catches to door frames, it is all super good quality. The kitchen work surfaces are solid Corian, so they are going to be good wear resistant. And now onto my geek stuff. Look at the level of workmanship that's going into this wood veneer. This is really, really good workmanship. Someone has put a lot of thought into this. The appliances are all top notch and are obviously specified by the owner. The one problem I have with this Nizer is the same as I had with the Maverick 440. This stippled paint for me is a no-no. It really does take away from the look of the boat. So overall for build quality, we are super happy to award the Nizer 500 SE a nine out of 10. Well done. And now 15 seconds of shameless advertising when we ask you to consider subscribing to the channel. We've done lots of fantastic reviews. We have lots more coming up. And in addition to this, in one of our next episodes, we have a fantastic prize to give away to one of you lucky subscribers. So please feel free to click just down there and you'll never miss a thing. Thanks very much. Now on to the next section. Let's now take a look at the interior design and overall livability of this boat. Let's start by looking at the cockpit. This cockpit has some great features. We'll start at the very back with this bait table, which has its own little seat. I think that is a really thoughtful little feature. Then you've got this swim platform, which doubles as like a walkway. So you can get to your dinghy, get to your table, get to your barbecue without having to go through the cockpit and disturb anyone else sitting there. That's really great design. The dining table here is a beautiful center point of this cockpit. I'm not generally a fan of curved seating for reasons that I've talked about before. I don't think it's particularly comfortable. However, this is an example of how to do it right. This dining table, the table itself is gorgeous and it provides plenty of practical dining space, but you also have a lot of lounging space. So you've got these two settees here, which would provide a really nice spot to kick back and relax. And you also have an additional seat on the other side of the cockpit. So plenty of lounging and dining options in this cockpit. I love this cockpit. I think it's beautiful. Let's go inside now. And once again, we've got that curved settee. You've also got those matching little stools there, which would double as chairs for extra guests, as well as footstools, which I think you would use because that settee is round. So if you wanted to put your feet up, then that would provide a really good option for you. Bear in mind that there is some customizability here, so you can choose your own finish, your own fabrics, all that kind of stuff. So in terms of the aesthetic, that is largely up to you, the customer. This also includes the layout of the galley, so you can change this galley around a little bit. For example, I probably wouldn't have the oven and stove right next to the staircase. That's for me, it's just a bit of a safety issue. That's my personal preference. Otherwise, it's a U-shaped galley, very practical. I really like it. You also have the option of a nav station here instead of this area that they're using for storage and their coffee machine. So that is something that I would probably do, but I understand that that's not to everyone's taste and not everyone feels that they need that separate nav station. In terms of visibility from inside and ventilation, both very good, particularly the visibility. The ventilation isn't bad. You've got those two small forward facing hatches, but you've also got two large opening hatches in the ceiling. So it could be better, but it's certainly by all means not bad at all. Let's go down now into the guest hull. If we go forward, we'll see that the forward guest berth is actually a raised berth and situated transversely. You have a lot of storage here and that is a feature throughout this boat. There are cupboards and drawers and little hidey holes absolutely everywhere. 
You've got a couple of steps up to the birth. I've read some of your comments where you say that perhaps you don't like these raised births. You don't think they're particularly safe. I can't see many situations where you wouldn't be able to get in or out of this birth safely. So to me, that doesn't seem to be much of an issue. I actually really like the forward births because I think they provide better ventilation than the aft births. And speaking of, this particular birth has decent ventilation, two opening hatches in the ceiling, no opening hatches on the side. So that is a feature throughout this boat. There's very few opening hatches that actually open out to the side. Your guest who is sleeping in this berth has their own separate shower room, which is lovely. There's your escape hatch there and that also doubles as fantastic ventilation while you're having a rinse. Let's go aft now and take a look at the other guest cabin. Once again, plenty of storage. Unfortunately, the berth is not an island berth, just like your Ford guest cabin. So that is a little bit of a shame. There's also two opening hatches, but neither hatch opens to the side. And I say that because sometimes in these aft cabins, it can get a little bit hot because there isn't as much breeze coming through the cockpit or the aft part of the boat as there is through the forward part of the boat. So that is just a consideration there. Your guests do not have to share a shower room. They have their own, which you'd probably expect on a 50 foot catamaran. And this particular shower room has a separate shower. Once again, storage, sink, toilet, all the usual things. Let's go into the master hull now. And I think this master hull is a really beautiful space. You have, once again, loads and loads of storage space. And I do like those latticed doors on your cupboards. They provide really nice ventilation to the items that you have stored away, but also I think they look really nice. You've got this vanity area forward of the berth, and I'm not sure whether for me personally that is the best use of space. I don't really sit down and do my makeup or my hair or anything like that, so I think that I would probably use that as a work desk. However, I can see how that would be really useful to some people. Forward, you've got a shower room, separate shower, toilet, sink, storage, everything that you would need and expect. Let's now take a listen to what I had to say on the day. I really like, I mean, I love this kind of lattice look. I think that that's very different. I haven't seen anything like that on other boats. And I think that the kind of overall use of space is really nice. I think this it has a feel of luxury, even if the like quality of the materials isn't quite like top, top, top. No, no, it, it's beautiful. It is beautiful, but you're right. The finish is not exactly where I'd want it to be. There are much better finishes, but as you correctly identify, it is a different price range to say privilege, to discovery, to exquisite. So yeah. we're looking at a sort of like almost a, a you know, if, if, if you want a luxury catamaran that is price sensitive, this isn't far off the mark. Mm. And it has a lot of things going for it that I do think are actually almost unbeatable like the helm position of this boat I really like it you feel set up there yeah it's amazing it is it's yeah. a really good helm yeah one thing Nick and I did not like about this boat was this stippled wall you might remember from the Maverick review that this is one feature that we just do not like I understand that Nisna actually offer this as an option you can also get skimmed walls as well as cladding put on the interior walls so it really is up to the customer and what they choose however there is an advantage to this stippled effect which is that first of all it saves the weight of cladding and second of all it shows up stress fractures which you may end up with if you do heavy weather sailing particularly around South African waters where this boat is built so what are we going to give this Nisna out of 10? We really loved the layout of this boat and there is a plenty of attention to detail. The quality of the finish and the materials isn't quite as high as some of the other brands coming out of South Africa. We'll discuss that in more detail later on in the episode. Also the ventilation in the cabins and in the saloon, while good enough, was not the best that I've seen. So we're going to give this boat a very healthy 8 out of 10 for interior design. Welcome to section 4 where we discuss statistics and performance for the Neisner 500 SE. She is a 50 foot catamaran that is 15 meters 25. The beam is 27 foot so that's almost 8 meters and the draft 3 foot 11 so 1 meters 44 in metric. 
Displacement 13 and a half tons, light displacement, that is pretty light. Coupled with a 75 meter square main and a 50 square meter Genoa, this boat is not going to be slow. She does not of course have daggerboard, so we cannot attest to her pointing ability, but with the weight and sail area, we are happy to award the Neisner 500 SC a six out of 10 for performance. Well done Neisner. And category five sees us looking at value for money for the Neisner 500 SE. Bear in mind the currency conversions are accurate from the 1st of November and this does not include taxes. Now in all the luxury South African yachts, we believe that the Neisner 500 represents fantastic value for money. This boat is $895,000 fully loaded. There is almost nothing you need to add. It comes with the sails, the dinghy, the outboard, the washing machine. There is nothing apart from the dishwasher, the folding props, and a couple of small items like maybe extra sails you are going to want to add to this. So loaded, you are looking at $930,000 at £720,000 or €845,000. All in all, this is good value for money if you are in the market for a 50-foot luxury yacht. 7 out of 10, Neisner. Well done. That was the very beautiful and very impressive Neisner 500 SE, another semi-custom build from one of South Africa's yards. As we do with all these reviews, we will look at our, the good points and then if there are any negatives, discuss the negatives. Now this is important. Um, I know that you know a lot of you are like, God, you two bang on about this stuff, but there are so many of you trying to make these choices and um, we hope this is useful for you if you are considering one of these catamarans yourself. So, Therese, without further ado, the good points of the Neisner 500 SE. The Neisner, I think, is a very beautiful, pretty looking boat. Yep. Um, it, the lines from the outside, which we didn't really talk about in the actual review itself, but the lines are really yep. lovely. Uh, and on the inside is very very stylish and I think that the general layout is brilliant is definitely got that kind of wow factor in terms of style and I also think that the layout is great I think that the build quality was very good and it has a lot of thoughtful features that are there really just for the sailors and the cruisers um, so for example that helm position I think was excellent when I saw that helm position in photos online, I was a little bit dubious about it because I thought it would feel like you were just kind of poking your head out of like a hole mm -hmm. <laughs> in the top of the bimini. But it actually feels uh, very protected and uh, pretty, very comfortable. It's a really comfortable seat and very good visibility from there as well. So I felt really comfortable and safe in that yep. helm position. And uh, yeah, I liked that a lot. Um, we'll talk about value for money, I think, in a minute. We will. Bye yeah, bye. but that's another big plus. But anyway, you, you tell me what you liked. I thought it was, for so yeah, I agree. It's a very, very well built boat. There's a lot of innovation in there that I think is clearly uh, designed by sailors for yeah. sailors, which is one of my big things. Um, when I look at the boat, I suppose the first question I ask is, would I happily try and circumnavigate this? Would I cross the Indian Ocean in this? answer yes mm. no qualms about it at all um so it is very very well built mm. um on to the other positive which you've already you've already touched on value for money for this boat this boat is eight hundred ninety-five thousand us dollars now um when we go on to the negatives what i will probably you know will probably say is that it's not quite as good a quality as the 1.3 1.2 million dollar boats so when you're looking at the wood finish it's not up there with privilege and it's not up there with exquisite and it's not up there with discovery but it is just about there so it is really well built and it is absolutely almost top-notch uh finish not quite mm. to my mind it, to me we're quite fastidious yeah we are very fastidious and i think we've seen enough of these catamarans with an objective eye to be able to say actually yeah some would say we're splitting hairs, but it's not quite as good. However, you are buying a 50-foot custom-built catamaran for 895,000 US dollars 
and this boat is fully loaded. When we talked to um, Nisner about this, there are about four things that are not included, and that's the dishwasher, folding props, so a couple of solar panels, and a few minor trinkets that you're gonna put on this boat. So really, I think for another 10 to 15,000, you've got everything you could possibly want. So that 895, lithium batteries, yes. Dinghy, yes. Outboard, yes. Screecher, yes. Uh, washing machine, yes. Gen set, obviously. Gen set, yes. Three solar panels. And you're like, blimey. That... Air conditioning. Yeah. So that, to me, is probably, it is fantastic value for money. It's now, incredibly good value for money. I think that if, if on your shortlist, you've got exquisite X5, you've got privilege uh, 5.0, you've got, um, sorry, privilege 510 now, uh, discovery 50, then you've got a difficult choice to make. St. Francis falls into that. Absolutely. As well. You're like, oh, do I want the $1.3 million yacht, which has got a slightly better finish? Or do I want the $900,000 yacht that's got maybe, you know, less quality in the finish? Or do I want like the top of the range and I'm going to spend all this money? And that I think probably proves a difficult decision because in the million dollar plus catamarans, there is a lot of competition, a lot of choice. Um, so that would prove a difficult choice to make and a very nice choice to have to make. I think if you are considering buying, say, a 50 foot production catamaran, and you're like, well, I've got Lagoon, I've got Leopard, I've got Fontaine Pajot, I've got Naughty Tech, or I could put, put Nyser into the mix. Absolute no-brainer. Yeah. Absolute no-brainer. You would be insane to buy a 50-foot production cat when you can get this instead. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I think that um, what I don't believe is immediately obvious is that the Nisner really in terms of its price point competes uh, is is very competitively priced when it when compared to the, the production boats. Yeah. So really, it's the production boats that you need to compare this against because that is the, they're at the same price. There's no point in comparing the Nisner to a Discovery Fifty or a Privilege, even though okay, Discovery Fifty and Privilege are bad examples actually, but Saint Francis, um, Exquisite. Um, these are the uh, South African boat builders who build these kind of boutique, semi-customizable boats, uh, Majestic, Royal Cape Majestic. It might be tempting to put Nisa in the same category as the South African builders, which obviously it is, but in terms of the final product and its price, it's, it's priced very competitively when it comes to um, production cats that, you know, as you say, why would you spend, if you had $900,000 and you're looking at 50 foot catamaran, I mean, a Lagoon will cost you... A million. Yeah. A Lagoon 50 will cost you a million, fully yeah, loaded. exactly. It's a no-brainer. So, um, from the positive, I think value for money, if you are considering a production catamaran, this is literally, you'd be foolish to not at least take a very, very good look at this. I don't see any... Well, everyone obviously has different um, opinions and different tastes, but... I wouldn't dream of buying a production no, boat when not, not, this not was when on, it's on the market. This was on the market. Um, it is a far, far superior boat. Absolutely. It is just as beautiful, if not more so, than a lot of the production boats, which are quite pretty. Um, I think that it, it cannot be beaten. I'm amazed actually that it, I, it's it's so Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty awesome one. Yeah. And I think okay, let's just throw the the negatives that people are going to throw and they're always going to go, what the but, you know, the, why would you buy this? Why would you buy a nice than when you could buy a Lagoon? Okay, so two things that we do have you comment on. Number one, and, and this is the minor of the two points, um, well, it's built in South Africa and, you know, you've got to, you know, you want the, the reliability of the European market and you want the re reliability of all that. Leopard is all built in South Africa, so getting a Nisner from South Africa to America, that's where you're based, or to Europe, is not a problem because Leopards are delivered all around the world, so that just completely knocks that one down. The second question, which is actually a broader, a broader subject, and we've been asked this a lot, and um, there's always like the occasional, you know, hasn't slept too well, a little bit angry or whatever, is like, well, why don't you discuss, why aren't you ever discussing dealer support? Mm. Um, and there's a reason why, which I will expand on, and it comes, it, it, it's, it's important when we're discussing, especially the South African builders, and the, you know, the non-European builders, and the non-production builders. When you are buying direct from the manufacturer, the dealer support is intrinsically always better. Yeah. And we, it's, it's very easy to discuss dealer support when you're buying from Seawind or you're buying from Utramel or you're buying from Nisner or Maverick or Exquisite because you get to talk to the dealer 
And that... The manufacturer. Ha- sorry, the manufacturer, sorry. Yeah. And that has two parts to it. One, you get to choose the boat and get to work with that manufacturer a lot more closely to get the boat that you want. Secondly, if anything goes wrong or you have a problem or you need something fixed or you need a spare after your warranty is expired, you get hold of the manufacturer and that is a very reassuring thing to have. However, when you are looking to production catamarans, most of them don't sell direct to the public. So Lagoon, Fontaine Pajot, um, Naughty Tech. Naughty Tech, I think Leopard actually do, but definitely the first three, they you cannot buy direct from them. You have to go to a dealer network. Now that means that the quality of service that you are going to get is not standardized. And you do have uh, a lot of evidence and a lot of people on the internet saying, well, I bought from so-and-so and their, their support was appalling. Other people saying, well, I bought from so-and-so and their, their support was brilliant for the same boat in different geographic regions. So from my point of view, I do believe that dealer support is fantastic, but you cannot compare production cats that sell through brokers to uh, semi-production or boutique manufacturers that sell direct to the public. Yeah. And Neisner falls clearly into the, they work with you closely. Yeah. So as a plus, but that plus extends to all boutique manufacturers and all manufacturers that, that, that sell direct to the public, that is a huge tick. Yeah. So yeah, so really happy with this Neisner, really happy. I think it's a beautiful boat. I think that really, if we look to say the privileges and the discoveries and the exquisites, this boat is coming in at 40 to 50% less. But it is also very, very well built. And also, it is a luxury product. Absolutely. You know, it's not like you're compromising on luxury no, at all. It comes not. with air conditioning, with a uh, washing machine, with all the things that you would need on a boat um, that, you know, you could, could be selling a privilege, you could be selling a nice but at the end of the day, you're having pretty much the same level of luxury and the same oh, lifestyle. Absolutely. I mean, look, if you were to, to, we always throw the, the car analogy out, right? If you were buying. You know, if, if you consider the the, the 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 production cats to be Ford and General Motors and Holden and Vauxhall, then you know the the, the semi boutiques are the, the Bentleys and the Ferraris and the Rolls Royces and and the Jaguars. While this isn't a Rolls Royce, it's definitely a Jag. You know, it's up there. It's 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 good and you know, very very impressed with nice. Yeah, I really liked this boat. I it, it really spoke to us. I think there weren't. Any um, negatives were really just nitpicking, yeah. um, and I think that it is a fantastic boat. And as we've said several times, but it's worth reiterating: if you are in the market for a 50-foot catamaran and your budget is just shy of a million dollars, why on earth would you buy a production boat Absolutely. when this is on the market? I do not understand. Yeah. Okay, um, negatives. We have to obviously run through any small negatives, Therese. Well, we've already mentioned uh, the uh, quality of the materials, not quite as high as um, boats in a different price bracket, obviously. So the comparison is probably unfair. But blows all the production cats out the water. Absolutely. Yep. Yes, definitely. Right. So this is it. Once you start comparing it to other boats in the price, same price bracket, then the difference in quality is really marked. Yep. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, small... Uh, complaint is that I think the ventilation could be better. I think people people are sick of you talking about flush mountain hatches and they're sick of me talking about ventilation, I think. No one ever gets sick of you talking about ventilation. In fact, <laughs> I get sick of me talking about Sometimes late at night when I can't sleep, I'm like, Therese, talk to me about ventilation a bit more. Tell us what you think about that lovely breeze coming through here. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, once this review series is over, I'll be happy never to discuss ventilation again. I'll be whispering it in your ear at three in the morning. <laughs> anyway, on, on with well, the show. Anyway, Anyway, it's 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 by no means it's perfectly adequate. Um, I it, it didn't kind of uh, wow me uh, when you compare, for example, like uh, the Sea Wind and the Katana that have these like huge, yeah. huge, huge forward opening hatches. Um, it's it's not quite on par with that. But yeah, minor minor point. Uh, when we're uh, actually looking around the boat on the day, we there are a few um, issues that we didn't. For example, the stippled. Um, yeah. Uh, effect on the wall and we were critical of that and we also were critical of it on the Maverick yeah same thing um, Neisner do offer options for that so you can have um, cladding or you can have a, a smooth surface yep. instead so you can so that, it's, that a was great. it's a weight saving thing and also um, their argument is that um, 
it will show up any stress fractures that might come up if you're sailing in like really heavy weather. Mm -hmm. I think at the point at which you can see stress fractures in your hull, you I don't know, <laughs> that would be a worrying moment. No, no hang on, no, catamarans do flex, they yeah. do move around and you do get stress fractures. Yeah. And that is important to, to understand that when you've got two hulls that are moving independently, unless they are super stiff, you are going to get, I mean, we've heard stories of, a manner fracture that shall remain nameless where you know every time you do uh, an ocean crossing all the windows fall out the other end because of the amount of flex in the boat does mm. um, so yeah if you well anyway um negative come on babe <laughs> it's always about the negative that we always end up talking about i i i honestly am nitp nitpicking i can't think of anything really it's just like tiny tiny uh note about the ventilation it's it's hardly a deal breaker the um the berths are not island berths i feel like perhaps they they'd make them for you could have been yeah you would obviously have to compromise on the size of the berth but Yes, you're right. If that was a deal breaker, they'd probably be able to create a little bit of space on either side instead of maybe like the shelving, they'd be able to... It doesn't even need to be um, like a standalone bed mm -hmm. like you see in these production boats with huge holes. It just like a little bit of um, even like a little couch or something on either side. It gives you something to kind of kneel on while changing the sheets. So anyway, um, look, I'm struggling to think of anything, to be honest. Yeah. What about um, you? Yeah. You can usually come up with something. Um, I don't like the stippled effect. I actually think they should ban it. <laughs> I know I do. I, I do think that. Nice... I think that if um, you're showing about the boat show. Yeah, that's uh, pointless. I, I think that you. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it doesn't it, look nice. It doesn't look nice. It's, it's a nice note, you know, and Maverick and all of those who've got uh, customers that are showing boats at boat show. If they want a stippled effect, just tell them tell them not to bother. It, it really does. It's off putting. Um, and we've had a lot of people say actually it is off-putting. It, it does it detracts from the look of the boat. It is a little bit you know it's like the old Stella Arta adverts where they used to kind of deliberately ruin perfection. They'd have like a guitar that they'd scratch or something. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. it ruins the look of the boat. So niceness, stop doing it. If someone wants it, tell them to go to Lagoon <laughs> or somewhere else. Lagoon. Uh, no, but the point is it is not a good look for the boat, so they yeah. need to stop doing it. Well. Um, it's up to the customer. They, they, they yeah. give the customer the option. So yeah, uh, anything, literally anything I come up with now is just nitpicking. There's yeah. nothing I can really fault with this boat. Mm. Nothing. I, And I think that's the first review where I haven't actually said, actually, there's a, you know, there's there's a significant problem with this boat. Mm. And um, yeah, no complaints at all. Quality's not up there with the 1.3 million ones, but it's 895,000. You know, so there you go. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? You know everything. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was the Neisner 500 SE, a, a very, very impressive boat. And, you know, uh, I hope you agree um, with what we've said. For those of you who have seen the 500 SE, either at uh, the Annapolis Boat Show or other boat shows, or indeed if you are an owner, leave your comments down below because um, I don't think we're caught in controversy here by saying that that is a pretty awesome boat. And um, I don't know why there aren't more of them out there. Mm. Um, so yeah, uh, we will be back with other reviews. Obviously, we've got the Annapolis Boat Show uh, reviews to continue. So if you haven't already seen the reviews we've done from Annapolis, La Grand Motte, and Southampton, they are all going to be linked down below. We've got a huge series of reviews out now. In addition to that, when we come to the end of this review series, which is going to be, uh, I think we'll finish the Annapolis reviews, in about uh, three or four episodes, we are gonna compile a list of the top 10 catamarans. Now, because there is so much BS thrown around on the internet where dealers are putting videos out and saying this is the best catamaran because, and even us, we have been accused of being biased. You're like, well, you've obviously, you know, your performance figures for that are rubbish and you're... you're... We've been accused of being paid for putting out bad reviews. <laughs> yeah, we have actually, yeah. Yeah, people... Promise you that it's not, no one is paying us to put out good yeah. or bad reviews. We're not getting paid for this in the slightest. Um, but to try and get round any potential claims of bias from either us or from other YouTube channels or from um, other dealers that are putting review videos out, the final result is going to be it is determined by you so we now have about 2000 uh, of you who have voted for the catamarans they put scores down below and the criteria that we chose to to kind of select these catamarans were also chosen by you so you chose the criteria and you are scoring them yourself so as far as we're concerned we are trying to be as objective as possible and when all these reviews are done 
there will be a top 10 of the best catamaran you can get in 2020 as it will be then <laughs> so anyway thank you so much for watching please feel free to subscribe there is a little button just down there if you click that and you're obviously your notification bell you won't miss an episode and you'll see our smiling faces on a far more regular basis if that is indeed what you want from life and who wouldn't want that anyway anyway goodbye.